On this one, I'm going to talk a little bit about duct temperature. Now that's a temperature, uh, you can measure it at the diffusers. Uh, it's probably best to measure it at the outlet of the furnace uh, in one of the trunk lines. What should the temperature be? There shouldn't be a lot of difference, by the way, between the temperature at the outlet of the furnace and at the diffuser. If there is, that indicates you're getting a lot of loss from where the ductwork, what it's traveling through. We won't talk about that so much now. What I wanted to talk about is what should that temperature be? Well, again, in everything out there, there's some variation that you're going to find. It's just the way it is. Well, the, the old standard used to be 150 degrees. Now, that was a long time ago. So what's wrong with 150 degrees? It feels nice and warm, right? Actually, it feels hot. But uh, it tends to stratify at the ceiling of the structure. So you still have colder air down where you are sitting or something, and it's warmer at the ceiling. One of the reasons wall-to-wall -wall carpet became so popular is because of, of course insulation issues, but these high temperatures of the ductwork blowing from the floor up and it just went straight up the ceiling. So 150 bad. The standard kind of got down to 120. Now there's not near as much stratification with 120. Uh, a little doohickey here. So 120 is about what we'd expect to have in most furnaces. Now, there's still stratification with 120. It's not as much stratification as the higher temperatures, but there is some stratification in the, the system. So we can knock it down like heat pumps. Uh, heat pumps first came out, got real popular in the 70s, and their duct temperature was more like 85 to 90. That was a common duct temperature for heat pump. If you got a heat pump at 120, you were going to burn the compressor up, I can guarantee you. They, they would not handle that. So 85 to 90. We got a lot of complaints from customers saying that's blowing cold air. It's actually making me cold. It isn't really making you cold. It is warming the house. It just doesn't feel like it. Because anything that you can feel that's well below body temperature, it is going to feel cold. It's evaporating water on your hand and so on and so it's going to feel colder. And so this number was not the greatest number we had to deal with. It was kind of a problem. People kind of got used to it after a while, but it was always kind of an issue. So in a general sense, 85 to 90 is not going to fly in most, uh, most homes. I'm not talking about businesses at this point. So what do we do to make it as efficient as possible? Because this number right here had virtually no stratification at all. It did not go to the ceiling and lay there. It just kind of mixed. You know, as your air comes up, it starts mixing with the rest of the air around it. Okay, this is kind of what it would look like. You have a floor diffuser. Air is coming up like that. This is your 120 air down here and you have ambient air temperature coming in here. That's going to cool it down. So uh, with the heat pump, of course, it barely moved to the ceiling at all. With the 120 duct temperature, it did some, not too bad. If I drop down to 110, now that's another drop. 
Okay, so if I get it down to one temp, most people will not have a problem with cold temperatures at that point. They won't feel it's too cold. However, you will reduce stratification. So I would like to settle on about 110 if I can get away with it. So duct temperature, if I can do 110 in my duct temperature and heat, I feel pretty good. Anyway, that's all for this one now.